Beloit police arrest a man in connection to a robbery from two years ago. The department says he held up the same gas station in a matter of days. Plus, doctors share a social media health warning for teens. Some online weight loss advice trends can hurt more than help. And local artists are awarded thousands in grants. Organizers say the money goes a long way to benefiting the community. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Beloit police arrest a man accused of robbing the same gas station twice. According to police, in August of 2021, a suspect entered the sit-go on Madison Road with a knife and demanded money from the clerk. Police believe the gas station had been robbed a week earlier by the same suspect. Beloit police say Aaron Singh was identified as a person of interest early on in the case's investigation. He was arrested after police say they gathered enough evidence of his involvement. His charges in the case have not been released. Tax season begins at the end of the month and consumer advocates warn people to be on the lookout for scams. 2024 tax filing opens January 29th. According to the IRS, taxpayers lost more than $5 billion to scams and fraud in 2022. For the first time in five years, the tax filing deadline is on the traditional date of April 15th. Consumer advocates say crooks will try to impersonate IRS agents or set up fake shops promising to file taxes. Dennis Horton with Rockford's Better Business Bureau says there are several ways to protect yourself. Make sure that you file as quickly as you can. Beat the scammer to the punch. Get it, get it done before they can get it done. Another thing that we uh, want people to understand is that the IRS is never going to pick up the phone and call you. They're not going to send you an email or text demanding immediate payment. Experts say to contact the IRS immediately if you get a written notice from the agency about a duplicate tax return, a notice stating you received wages from a company you never worked for, or any notice that additional taxes are owed. A federal agency is warning that a cancer drug may cause a secondary cancer. The FDA is warning people about CAR T therapies. Federal health experts say they found reports of cancer patients being diagnosed with blood cancers following their treatment. CAR T is used to fight leukemia, multiple myeloma, and lymphoma. Drug manufacturers are being required to add a black box warning stating the treatment may cause cancer. Researchers may have unlocked a new way to detect Alzheimer's disease before symptoms show. A study from the Journal of the American Medical Association Neurology suggests testing someone's blood for key proteins could result in the early detection of Alzheimer's. The test is only available for research but could be approved for clinical use soon. Researchers say this development would lead to better assessment of cognitive decline, patient management, and therapies. Social media can be a great way to learn tips and tricks, but you have to be careful when it comes to some information being shared. Doctors warn teens and young adults about the risks of so-called diet pills that seem to be popular right now. Drea Baroni learned more about those dangers. Drea. Yeah, Eric, Mimi, thousands of posts clutter social media with diet hacks and weight loss trends. With drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi on the rise, some people who can't get that prescription are turning to laxatives and diuretics for weight loss. For weight loss. But health professionals I talked with say those won't help lose the weight you want to get rid of. You lose water. You're not actually losing fat. You're losing water, which can result in dramatic weight loss for a very short period of time from the dehydration. But you're actually not losing weight per se, not the kind of weight that you want to lose. And as soon as you rehydrate, that weight is going to come right back. 15% of Americans admit to using supplements to try to lose weight, but health professionals remind you to always implement healthy habits first instead of turning to weight loss drugs and speaking to your doctor or nutritionist, not a social media trend. Mimi, Eric. Thanks, Drea. Domestic and gun violence prevention advocates make the case for a bill that would protect domestic violence victims. Local and state legislators gathered in Chicago to talk about Karina's bill. The law would give police the permission to remove a gun within 48 hours of a protection order being issued. The bill is named after Karina Gonzalez. Her husband shot and killed Karina and her daughter last July. Karina had an order of protection in place. Karina's cousin Monica says the loss is still hard to deal with. She always kept her spirits up and found a way to persevere. If you ask me, she was a warrior. And I just wish she knew just how loved she was and how we miss her terribly. 
advocates tried passing the bill in 2023. It did not make it through the Senate. Supporters hope for a different result in the spring. A state lawmaker is trying to make sure carbon dioxide pipeline companies can't utilize eminent domain when planning their projects. Illinois has become a hotspot for proposals of CO2 pipelines. So far, proposed projects have not gotten any footing due to pushback from the public and state regulators. Republican Senator Stephen McClure's bill would prevent companies from using eminent domain even if the state gives the go-ahead for the projects. There's a couple of issues here. Number one, people are still concerned about the safety of CO2 pipelines. And number two, most landowners don't want CO2 pipelines on their property. So this is a way to try to give protections to landowners. The latest pipeline fight is happening in Gibson City. The city will hold a meeting about the project February 6th. That project's already facing major public pushback. Local artists receive thousands of dollars to continue their work. The Rockford Area Arts Council announced the recipients of the 2024 Community Arts Access Grants. $54,000 in grants are being awarded to local artists, organizations, and nonprofits. Supporters say the program is designed to increase access to arts in the community while also promoting collaboration among organizations and artists. Arts Council Program Director Kayla Action says it's rewarding to help artists create a positive difference in the community. If we're able to grant $2,500 to 20 organizations, those 20 organizations with their projects that are ongoing throughout the year could reach anywhere from 100 to a few thousand people. You add that all up and you're looking at $54,000 in access grants being distributed could result in 75,000 plus people being impacted positively by these funds, by those granted projects. 26 organizations across the state line will share the community arts access grants. A very rare event will happen this year, and it could mean a cicada takeover. Two different cycles of the bugs are expected to emerge at the same time. One appears every 13 years and the other every 17. That means billions of cicadas will make an appearance across the Midwest and the Southeast. That could start in late April for some places and go through the summer. This only happens every 221 years, meaning the last time was in 1803. Former President Donald Trump wins the New Hampshire primary. Up next, presidential candidate Nikki Haley says even after the defeat, she's not going anywhere. And coming up at 6, many people kick on their heat during the winter months, but that can be risky. A local fire department warns about the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning. And temperatures this afternoon were just a stone's throw away from that 40 degree mark. And that warmer weather continues. It'll also lead to more snow melt and more cloud cover and some fog too. We've got some rain showers again to time out. A look at how much could come down tomorrow. Coming up in the first warm forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. Your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Leber, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. During his victory speech in New Hampshire last night, Donald Trump attacked Nikki Haley for staying in the race. But Haley says she's not leaving, at least until the South Carolina primary next month. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor takes a look at the race for the GOP nomination as it heads to warmer weather. We'll see you on the trail. As far as Donald Trump is concerned, he's already the GOP nominee for president. After beating Nikki Haley in New Hampshire's Republican primary Tuesday. She had a very bad night. But on Wednesday, Haley made it clear she's staying put in the race, at least until after the primary in her home state of South Carolina next month. If Joe Biden wins, you can count on a President Kamala Harris, and we can't promise Donald Trump will win. But Trump's New Hampshire victory is winning him more Republican support in Congress for November's general election. More and more people are coming on board. I think his him being the nominee at this point is... Um, uh, virtually certainty. Senators Eric Schmidt and Rick Scott had previously endorsed Trump, arguing his record cements his spot as the GOP presidential candidate. When you run against him, what are you going to run on? Do you have a better plan to secure the border or build a better economy or keep us out of war? President Joe Biden said Wednesday at a campaign event that Trump's record is precisely why Americans should vote Democrat. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who lost jobs when he was president. South Carolina's Democratic primary is February 3rd, while the Republican primary is February 24th. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Well, it looks like the state line will stay in the 30s over the next couple days. After the break, Candace tells us our chances for rain tonight and when the clouds might move out. Now, your 
first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, we had some pretty steady rain come down earlier today. Most of that has moved off to the east and northeast. However, I think we'll still see a couple of areas of drizzle and even a light rain shower or two as we go through the rest of this evening. Steadier rain expected to move in within the next 24 hours. Now, the rainfall we had from last night or yeah, late last night, very early this morning, uh, didn't really amount to much. Most of us ended under a tenth of an inch, but the rain coming in tomorrow, we could actually pick up a half an inch to maybe even three quarters of an inch in some locations. Now behind the departing rain showers, what we're starting to notice again are some areas of fog beginning to develop. And in some places, the fog never really ended. Visibility down under two miles in DeKalb, under a mile right now in Janesville, four mile visibility here in Rockford and three in Rochelle. There is a dense fog advisory right now for McHenry County and Walworth County in southeast Wisconsin. We may see that advisory extended a little further to the west, but that dense fog may be a little more localized here tonight going into tomorrow. Nonetheless, I think we'll still deal with some locally dense fog. So again, tomorrow morning, just take it easy. 35, our temperature in Freeport Rochelle. We're at 37 in Rockford. We made it up to 38 degrees today, so a lot of melting of the snow taking place. Uh, don't necessarily have to worry about anything refreezing as temperatures throughout the week expected to remain above 32 degrees. 37 for our weather watch Watcher Terry down in Genoa. Rain was just under a tenth of an inch, and that dew point number sits at 35. Now, the reason why we've been dealing with the cloud cover and now the fog, which again is very typical once we get into kind of the melting season or winter season, I should say, uh, is because of the snow that we have on the ground. So the snow, as it melts away, it adds a little more moisture into the atmosphere. Well, what we've got are some colder temperatures that are down near the surface because of that snow cover. What we have going on just a few thousand feet above is actually some warmer air being pushed in. So what that does is that creates what's known as an inversion. Underneath that inversion, because we've got the moisture from the melting snow and the higher dew points, we've got a lot of saturation taking place. So that traps the moisture down near the surface. The atmosphere is not able to mix because we're not able to see the sunshine. So the end result of that, we've got cloud cover and then we've got fog too because our winds are also rather light. And that light wind is something that'll stick with us for at least the next couple of days. So temperature tonight down to 34 degrees, evening drizzle, some locally dense fog possible here as we go through the night. Notice our wind tomorrow about 5 to 10, maybe up to 15 miles per hour, 38 for the morning with some fog. And then we've got the potential for some rain to move back in once we get into tomorrow afternoon. So let's time this out here on future cast. Temperatures stay in those low 30s tonight. A little drizzle along with the fog possible tomorrow morning before noon. But once we get into the afternoon, and then into tomorrow evening. I think that's when we start to see the steady rain begin to move in with our second low pressure system passing to the south. Now that will linger going into Friday morning before drying out again Friday afternoon, but we keep the cloud cover around going into Friday afternoon and Friday evening. So when we look at the rainfall totals coming up for tomorrow, I do think tomorrow will be more than what we had out there today. And again, anywhere from a half an inch to even up to three quarters of an inch of rain expected to come down. We'll dry things out a little bit for Friday, Saturday. Temperatures staying very steady in the 30s. We'll see a little dip, guys, in those numbers in the overnight lows back down into the 20s towards the end of the weekend early next week. But as we continue to melt away the snow and we bring in a little warmer air, I think we could make it very close to, if not in the low 40s, by the time we get to the middle to end of next week. And there's no major cold in sight. That looks good. Thanks, Candace. Wisconsin next with sports. The Packers are making a major change in their coaching staff, one that many fans should approve of. And a local basketball player is up for a major college award. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. If you're a Packers fan and you wanted Joe Barry gone, you've gotten your wish. The defensive coordinator has been fired. Barry was the Packers' D.C. for the last three seasons. A strong finish by the defense this season was not enough to make up for the overall performance of the defense this season or the past two. The Packers' D finished only 17th in the NFL in total defense and only 28th against the run. The Packers also had the second fewest amount of interceptions by the defense. 
Bucks. How about Vic Fangio as a defense coordinator for the Packers or the Bears? Fangio was the Bears defense coordinator a few years ago. But today he's had a parting in the ways with the Dolphins where he was overseeing their defense. Or it has it though that he's going to wind up with the Eagles. High school basketball fans will buckle up this evening for one very big basketball game in Pecatonica. The Indians will be hosting the Byron Tigers. Uh, Pecatonica is ranked fifth in the state in Class 1A in the rankings just revealed today. Byron is ranked fourth in the state in Class 2A. The Tigers are undefeated at 17-0. Pecatonica is 18-3. Two similar teams that are almost mirror images of each other. Of highlights of this one tonight at 10 o'clock. Here's what we're looking at in the Nick 10 tonight. East at Auburn, Boylan at Belvedere, Belvedere North at Harlem, Freeport at Jefferson, and Hananiga at Conference Leader Guilford. Fighting Illini are ready to take the court tonight. They'll have an 8 o'clock tip off at Northwestern. The Illini are 5 and 2 in the conference. The Wildcats are 4 and 3. The first time they met on January 2nd, the Illini blew out the Cats by 30 points. Marcus Domask scored 32 points in that game. Hey, Hananiga graduate Jordan King's up for a major award in women's college basketball. She's one in 10 finalists for the Cheryl Miller Award. That goes to the top small school forward in the country. King is averaging 14 and a half points per game this season, along with almost four assists for Marquette. She scored in double figures in 17 of Marquette's 19 games. At Sports, we'll be right back. Well, the warmer temperatures are definitely nice, but it would be good to have a little sunshine. It would just boost picky. the mood. We talked about this earlier, <laughs> yeah. right? It would be much better to have blazing sunshine and uh, get maybe unpopular opinion, blazing sunshine and 15 degrees than cloudy, gloomy mid 30s. If it were 15 degrees and no wind. We can yes. do that. Deal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Make it happen. How does that go? <laughs> Put the like, order in. Right. Yeah. But if we've got some wind, then I think I'd rather take no wind, cloud cover, and a little fog too. But um, yeah, I mean, sunshine will be nice. Next week, I think we've got a good chance of some sun. Until then, a little fog tonight, more rain tomorrow afternoon. Thanks, Candace. Mm -hmm. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe. <laughs>